Hi, I'm Dylan Paris. My channel is mostly focused on music production, uh, music technology, that sort of thing. Every now and then I do touch on tech though. And today I wanna to talk about why I bought a Galaxy Note 10 Plus, brand new on eBay in 2021. First things first, this phone is huge. It's giant and I love it. My last phone was an iPhone XS, which I also bought on eBay. That phone was used. I got it for $450 a year after it came out. It served me well uh, over the course of most of 2020. Overall, I had a pretty decent experience, but as often happens for me and maybe other folks, I found that too many of the limitations of iOS were frustrating, especially the way Apple handles certain things in their ecosystem. A big one was Xbox Game Pass, which I know is eventually gonna come to iOS, via some kind of web app, but Apple's policy against things like Game Pass where they still let things like Netflix go through, but for Game Pass, they wanna individually review every game, whereas they don't individually review every movie on Netflix, for example. That was a big policy issue I just didn't appreciate. And then another thing was just really form factor. You know, there are big iPhones. I had the XS, not the XS Max, but there really isn't an iPhone like this. This is all screen, basically. I mean, you've got a little bit of a hole punch and you do have a little bit of bezel, but it's, it's mostly screen and I'm really enjoying that. But I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. Before I get started, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, it helps channels like mine grow when people interact, leave comments like, I know you hear it all the time, and that's because it's true. Anyway, yeah, so I bought this Note 10 Plus for $688, brand new on eBay. I'm pretty sure it launched around 1200. This is the Snapdragon model with 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage in the black or gray, I forget if they use space or galaxy or whatever, some kind of space euphemism, black, gray, colorway. I always get my phones in black. I think gadgets in general look best in black, but there are plenty of options if you don't want black, including Aura Glow, which is kind of cool looking, and Aura White, which is a white phone. I don't know. There's other ones. <laughs> the reason I got the 2019 model of this phone is primarily because I like to own my phones outright. And this is something I actually really recommend that people look into. I used to be on Sprint, where I paid like 80 a month for unlimited data and my phone lease. And I just started to realize that was way too much money for what I was getting out of a phone, especially if you buy Samsung phones. Samsung phones devalue very, very quickly. A phone like the Note 10 Plus, which launched for around 1200 in the fall of 2019, now is routinely available for 550 used or in the like higher 600 mark for brand new on eBay. That's a huge depreciation. And while it will continue to depreciate, there's not as much headroom to lose if you buy in at 680 and sell for something like 400 or 300, whereas if you buy at 1200, and then sell for something like 300, 400, two years later. So the reason I recommend buying last gen phones a year after they come out is that you can buy them pretty cheap, which means you don't have to worry about insurance because you can just replace it if necessary, rather than also paying a huge premium every month and having to pay whatever it costs to repair or replace a brand new phone. The other reason is that flagship phones have future-proof parts. This phone has 12 gigabytes of RAM. This phone has more RAM than the base model MacBook Pro and MacBook Air that Apple just released. And it obviously has more than any iPhone. The way Apple manages RAM in their systems means that you do get really great performance on less RAM on iOS. I'm not here to say you don't, but I can notice how snappy this device is compared to my iPhone XS. So the the reason I recommend owning a phone outright, especially if you buy a phone that can work with GSM and CDMA in America, this is a kind of US centric video because I know a lot of other countries already do this normally. But in the US, a lot of cell phone users will actually get on a plan and then lease their phone out with their data through someone like Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, now that Sprint's basically dead. And I'm here to say that is a waste of money, especially in the quarantine times. I've used no data. So what I did is I moved myself to a Mint Mobile plan. This is not sponsored but I paid $200 for three gigs a month for a year, like all in one, just $200 down plus 688 for my phone. That's less than a thousand dollars for my phone is just covered. I have three gigs a month I won't use cause I don't leave my house, I work from home. But even if I did, I had three gigs, which is totally fine. Um, you can download YouTube videos with YouTube premium. You can download Spotify with Spotify premium. So I don't really need that much data, even if I was outside. And if I was, I could pay more to get more but I'm still saving a lot compared to a traditional cell phone plan. I have friends paying over $100 a month for one phone and one line. That's bananas. That's, uh, 
that's that's too much don't do that there's no need to do that you don't need the newest phone and you can get really nice technology for really cheap prices if you just get the last gen tech especially used but even new after a year what are my favorite things about the note 10 plus and why did i get it we are living in the quarantine times and having a fingerprint scanner right here in the middle of the screen is really cool it's really nice i do still go outside sometimes to run errands or you know take out the trash get the mail etc go on a walk and when i do that with an iphone right now it means letting it fail to scan my face and then putting in a pin every time and it's frustrating and it's frustrating that apple refuses to put fingerprint technology back in their devices in a time like this when we know they can because they did on the iPad Air 4 on the power button. I know it would be a change in manufacturing, but we, these are strange times. And honestly, having multiple ways to access your device, one of which doesn't require you to remove a mask or put in a pin is really nice. Like I said before, the size is a big factor. This is essentially a tablet replacement for me as much as it is a phone replacement. And watching videos on this is just really luxe. For example, here's a video I filmed. This is in full screen mode, stretching it out, and it just takes so much space. Now obviously text is getting cut off there, and I'm gonna try to be more careful when I put commentary text to make it fit in this space. But yeah, you just, you get so much room. And along with that, you also have the ability to multitask, which is really cool. If you load up an app in the browser and then open in split screen view, I can then full screen the YouTube video and then really quickly switch them just by tapping the middle bar here and then have a full video playing up at the top and a fully usable web browser. And because the phone is this big, this is a really usable interface. It handles multitasking pretty well. I can still swipe up and hold. Video will keep playing. I can go to whatever I want, check out my Insta. Although, ironically, Insta is a great example of an app that doesn't support multi-app view. So it's not perfect, but that's Facebook's fault. That's not Samsung or Google's fault. And you know, Facebook is wont to do dumb stuff on the regular. But yes, I got the Note 10 Plus in 2021. I've had it for about a week. It's been amazing. It's very fast. It, the screen is phenomenal, as noted. Uh, it was brand new, and so the battery health is 100%. I'm not seeing any kind of slowdown from anything like that. It is not on One UI 3.0 yet. I think it's still 2.5. I'm not sure when it's gonna update. That could be a downside of being on an MVMO and not being on a major carrier, but I would still take that trade because of the money savings. You might notice my interface, my icons are not standard. When I'm using Android, I always use Nova Prime as my launcher. There are a couple of awesome things about Nova Prime. The control over icon packs is really nice. And then there's some user interface stuff I like. So on Nova, I have it so a swipe down from anywhere on the home screen will show my notifications. And then I have it so a swipe up from anywhere on the home screen will show the app drawer. And then I also have it so double tapping loads an app search window, but this also has a Google option. So if I say like double tap uh, Dylan Paris music balcony and then Google search, I'm not gonna get me yet because my SEO sucks, but balcony by me, Dylan Paris, comes out on the 19th of January, 2021, on all streaming services and Bandcamp. Definitely check it out. I'm really proud of it. It's kind of an Odessa, like electronic, uh, uh, chill instrumental track, and I'm really excited about it. I actually started producing it in the video I will link below, um, but I finished it up and now it's a polished final track. So look forward to that. And while we're here, this video is actually brought to you by me, Dylan Paris. I'm a musician, I'm a YouTuber, like I said before, liking and subscribing is a real cool thing to do, smashing that like button. But I also put out an album last year called There's Something Better. You can find it on Bandcamp or any streaming service or music service you choose. I'm really proud of it and I highly recommend you check it out. I'll also link that below. Thank you for your time. I know this is a bit of an overview, but hopefully it gets into the why I decided to switch. I wanted the flexibility of Android. I wanted the screen size and the power of the Note 10 Plus. I wanted to stream Xbox games from Game Pass as well as streaming them from my Xbox Series X in a much bigger screen and overall I just like the flexibility and the power of the device. I highly recommend you buy used devices or at least older devices and I highly recommend you do not give the big three carriers your hard-earned money. They don't deserve it and they suck. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace.